but sleeps in her cape. But when we realized she was battling sensitive skin, we switched to Tide Pods Free and Gentle. It's gentle on her skin and dermatologist recommended. Tide Free and Gentle. Safe for skin with psoriasis and eczema. In our E.T. birthdays, which Avenger star was considered for Johnny Depp's role on 21 Jump Street? That's Josh Brolin, who turns 52 today. Hey, by the way, make sure that you check out the new season of Total Bellas, returning April 9th on E. Um, there's a lot brewing. And tomorrow, our Couples Week continues with another dancing duo who sent a little message for you guys. Oh. Nikki and Autumn, you guys did an amazing job, but tomorrow, it's our turn. We are taking over that ET stage, so get ready. Are they coming for you? Um, I think so. Do they know there's three of us now? Yeah, do not mess with mama. <laughs> no um, by the way, we're going to leave you with a former dancing champ, Jordan Fisher, along with Lana Condor and Noah Centineo. They star in To All the Boys. P.S. I still love you. It is actually streaming. Happening now. Bear County investigators say that a man kills another over a marijuana debt, then comes home and kills his common law wife over an argument. I'm Devin Clark. Coming up, we'll tell you what the next door neighbor heard. A shirt's fire truck responding to an early morning crash when it became part of a second scene. Today, first responders reminding drivers to move over and slow down. The Precinct 2 captain indicted with Constable Michelle Barrientes Vela was fired. We'll tell you why coming up. We had some good healthy rainfall last night. I'll break down how much we got and where, along with the cooler air that's settling into town. All that coming right up. Bernie Sanders is calling for a revolution after his New Hampshire primary win. I'm Nadia Romero in Manchester. I'll have an update on the winners and the losers after primary night. If you're looking to buy a home, it might be time. The News at 5 starts right now. And first at five, two capital murder charges have been filed against a man accused of killing another over a marijuana debt and then returning home to kill his common law wife Tuesday morning. The first case unfolding on Sandy Circle in South Bear County and the second at his home just a few miles away on Mogford. Today, the suspect's neighbor broke her silence to our Devin Clark about what she says was a history of ongoing problems next door. My husband went and put um, locks on our door like from the outside and we lock it now that we're home. This woman who doesn't want to be identified lives next door to an accused killer. On Tuesday, Bear County Sheriff's investigators say 36-year-old Michael Morales killed 37-year-old Felix Pacheco Garcia by stabbing him with a screwdriver in his upper body. The deadly fight allegedly over money Garcia owed Morales for marijuana. And then I told my husband, I was like, Some, something happened next door. Sheriff Javier Salazar says Morales went back to his house just a few miles away and fatally shot his common law wife, 45 year old Mary Sanchez, after she became upset about Garcia's killing. And the next door neighbor says she's only lived here for a few weeks, but she constantly heard fighting coming from the suspect's house. Reasons why she's not really surprised by the violence. But the night before we did hear them arguing, you know, um, screams and stuff like that. Even though Michael Morales remains behind bars Michael, tonight, his neighbor. We do have a little girl that we have to protect. Says she's planning to take extra precaution just in case he posts his $2 million bond for the two counts of capital murder he's now charged with. I'm going to go buy me a gun too. I mean, to defend myself you know what I mean I mean like I said I mean we you never know what people are capable of nowadays I mean if that was somebody that he loved and he was able to do that to her can you imagine what he's able to do it to anybody else in South Bear County Devin Clark KSAT 12 News we are still working to learn the name of a man who was found dead in a ditch on the city's south side yesterday. San Antonio police are investigating his death as a murder. Police say a school district officer found the man around 420 on Rosebud Lane near Harlandale High School. It's unclear what district that officer is from. A man and woman were taken in for questioning. It's unclear how the man died. The medical examiner also working to identify a woman killed in a house fire this morning. Fire crews were called to the home on Briar Meadow about 6 a.m. The San Antonio Fire Department says heavy flames and a gas leak made it hard for firefighters to make their way inside. Once they did get in, they found the woman's body in a position that appeared as if she was trying to escape. Despite firefighters saying the home was supposed to be vacant and power had been shut off, neighbors say They'd seen people in that home using a generator for electricity. 
The cause of the fire is still under investigation. A 16-year-old boy is recovering after he was shot in the back last night on the city's west side. Right now, police are still looking for the shooter and more information on what exactly happened. They say the victim was shot inside a PT cruiser around 10 o'clock, possibly at Monterey Park. Police believe a 13-year-old boy who was sitting in the back seat may have accidentally shot the victim. After the shooting, the victim was driven to his home in the 500 block of Miracle Lane. From there, he was taken to University Hospital. No arrests have been made. One year after a 17-year-old was shot on the northeast side, the suspect has finally been caught. 19-year-old Jamal Javon Christian now charged with assault with a deadly weapon. Christian accused of shooting at a car with three teenagers inside near Mystic Sunrise and Burning Sunrise in February of last year. Investigators connected Christian to a case linking a gun in his possession to the gun used in the shooting. In new at five, the shirts fire department is out of one of its platform trucks after it was hit overnight by an 18 wheeler on I-35. Luckily, no one was injured. The Schertz Fire Department truck itself was badly damaged. It was the first of two typically used to shield first responders when they're working accidents on I-35. That's what they were doing in the rain about 3 a.m. after another 18-wheeler a jackknifed. Not even a truck that large with flashing lights in the rain able to slow the oncoming rig. Crashed right into it. Schertz police ticketed the driver who witnesses say appeared to be in a hurry. I don't want to think about what mayor could have been if that unit wasn't there. That unit served its purpose at that particular time and no one else was hurt. It's a good thing that truck was there until this one is back in service or replaced. The battalion chief says Schertz has another platform truck. It also has mutual aid agreements with area fire departments that they'll help them out. He says this should serve as a reminder to drivers whenever they see emergency vehicles at a scene, slow down, move over avoid potential tragedies. Well, weeks after former Precinct 2 Captain Mark Garcia was indicted on felony and misdemeanor charges alongside Michelle Barrientes Vela, Garcia has been fired from the constable's office. He had been on administrative leave since January 24th, the day after the indictment. Garcia is accused of making false statements under oath and faces a felony charge of aggravated perjury and three charges of official oppression. He and Barrientes Vela have a long history of problems within the Precinct 2 constable's office. Dylan Collier has been keeping track of those issues since they first came to light. You, you can get up to speed on their stories right now on our website, ksat.com. We had some good rainfall last night. The aquifer is up about a half a foot as a result of it. And now we actually have clear sky and we're going to clear out here and have a good amount of sunshine, a nice sunny stretch for a few days. But take a look at some of these rainfall totals from our weather watchers. Warren and Del Rio, about four tenths of an inch. Same with Divine shirts, almost half an inch. You get to Maiko, Dean Davis. He checked out 1.17 inches of rainfall and about the same in Canyon Lake. Temperature wise, we're in the 60s. It's very comfortable outside right now. 64 Helotus, Rio Medina 66, Floresville right now at 61. Temperatures this evening falling off pretty quickly. Clear sky, calming wind, good, good radiational cooling. So by 10 p.m. down to 49 degrees and tomorrow morning we'll feel a chill in the air. We have a little cool stretch of weather to talk about coming right up. All right, thank you, Adam. The first primary in the nation delivering a boost to several campaigns and signaling the end of a run for others. Andrew Yang, Michael Bennett, and Deval Patrick have suspended their campaigns for the Democratic nomination. Yeah, candidates are taking notes from last night's elections as they try to stay in the running. Nadia Romero is in Manchester, New Hampshire now with a look at lessons learned. Nadia. Well, Steve and EC, I just want to update you. We're just learning that the Iowa Democratic Party chair just resigned. So it seems he took the fallout there from the chaos we saw with the caucuses. Now, all eyes are talking about New Hampshire and looking at Bernie Sanders. He's surging. Amy Klobuchar with a surprise, but still many questions remain about Elizabeth Warren and Joe Biden. <laughs> New Hampshire Democratic voters are calling for a revolution, at least according to primary victor Bernie Sanders. We are putting together a coalition of working people, of young people. We're feeling great. We think we're on path to victory. We'll win the nomination. 
But with the two Midwestern moderates, Pete Buttigieg and Amy Klobuchar, tight on his heels, the battle between the center and the left of the party will likely intensify as the race heats up. If they're going to continue uh, advancing this message that says you're either for a revolution or you must be for the status quo, I think a, a lot of uh, voters are going to be looking somewhere else. Klobuchar's surprising last-minute gains could give her momentum and money as she forges ahead. Hello, America. I'm Amy Klobuchar, and I will beat Donald Trump. But the shakeup in the race now leaves early contenders Joe Biden. It ain't over, man. We're just getting started. And Elizabeth Warren. Our campaign is built for the long haul. On shakier ground. As expected, the field is beginning to narrow, with three more departures from the race. But a dark horse candidate is looming on the horizon. <laughs> Michael Bloomberg. Bloomberg's ground game in Super Tuesday states, along with his massive war chest, could upend the race in the weeks to come. So if the candidates can survive through South Carolina and Nevada, then they're on to Super Tuesday. 14 states, including Tuesday, have their contests then. What's their surprise? Michael Bloomberg. He'll be waiting with for them. He already spent $129 million in TV commercials already in Super Tuesday states. Live from Manchester, New Hampshire, I'm Nadia Romero. Steve, back to you. And of course, Texas, one of those big Super Tuesday prizes out there. Nadia Romero keeping us up to down the campaign trail. Thank you, Nadia. Well, now to a recall alert. The Food and Drug Administration is recalling insulin pumps used by patients, patients with type 1 diabetes. 322,000 models of Medtronic's Mini Med 600 series insulin pumps are being recalled. The issue is with a faulty pump that can deliver incorrect insulin dosing. One patient has died and more than 2,000 2,000 others have been injured. The FDA has received more than 26,000 complaints over these pumps. If you have one of these or know someone who does, call Medtronic or contact your doctor. Your device will be replaced if it's defective. 45,000 cases of the coronavirus have been tracked worldwide and more than 1,000 deaths have been reported. As more and more people enter the U.S. from China, the Centers for Disease Control asking them to self-quarantine for two weeks. It's estimated more than 30,000 people traveling from China have been screened at 11 airports. Today, lawmakers on Capitol Hill expressed concerns over the nation's preparedness as they're trying to contain a potential outbreak. We're very alert. I don't think we're alarmed at this point, but we need to be leaning into what will the next step be if we can't contain it. So far, 13 people have tested positive for the coronavirus in six states, none of them in Texas. No deaths in the United States have been reported either. If you're on the hunt for a, a home, the market is in your favor. Right now, mortgage rates on a 30-year fixed rate loan are at 3.45%. So that's the lowest since October 2016, according to mortgage loan company Freddie Mac. Over the last week, mortgage applications have jumped 5%. And refinancing op applications jumped 15% to the highest level in almost seven years. Any drop in the mortgage rate can be the difference of thousands of dollars over the life of a loan. By the way, if you're house hunting, right now on KSAT.com, we have tips to help you compare offers. It's part of our KSAT News at Nine series, Money It's Personal. From what you should be requesting from lenders to what you need to look out for in each offer, you can find all those tips on our website, ksat.com. Just look for this story. Valuable information there. All right, Southwest Airlines currently testing a number of planes after an 18-month audit by the U.S. Department of Transportation found the airline has been flying planes without verifying their safety. The audit found a whistleblower complaint that accused the Federal Aviation Administration of allowing Southwest to put millions of lives at risk by not training pilots properly and giving pilots inaccurate information before departures. The audit found 88 planes flew more than 150,000 times without ever being tested for airworthiness. Southwest says the planes in question have already been inspected or are currently being inspected. Up next at five, Hemisphere getting a big boost from Bank of America. What a $750,000 anchor grant will be put towards and what the bank hopes to promote. Coming up next.
Bank of America announcing a new partnership today with Hemisphere as a way to invest in small businesses. The company is giving Hemisphere a $750,000 anchor grant that will be put towards turning one of the houses at Hemisphere into a small business. Today's donation is the largest corporate foundation grant Hemisphere has received since Yanawana Gardens opened in 2015. All right, if you work in an office or a television studio, you may be familiar with the battle of the thermostat. Some people are always hot, others are bundled up in sweaters year round. If this sounds familiar, 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz has some ways to make life a little more comfortable. It's a problem of indoor work life. Office temperatures are sometimes unpredictable and often out of our control. It's like a freezer in here. Pretty cold. Sometimes workers are forced to take matters into their own shivering hands. If your building allows it, a small space heater can warm up your office. The safest place to put it is on the floor, not your desktop. And always plug it directly into the wall. Don't use an extension cord and keep it at least three feet away from any combustible materials. Consumer Reports tested space heaters for office use. Top ratings went to this slimline model from Comfort Zone and this oscillating heater from Lasco. Remember, though, to always turn a heater off when you leave, even if it's only for a short meeting. Another problem, dry winter air. A personal humidifier can help. An overheated office can dry out your nasal passages and your skin. Personal humidifiers work well in small rooms, and we found most of them are easy to maintain. Consumer Reports' top choices are this Hunter, which runs quietly, and the Well at Walgreens, which automatically shuts off when it's empty. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Boy, can we relate to that story here at KSAT. <laughs> I said, I, I said television. I yeah. said television studios. Yeah, he meant it. Yeah. Meantime, let's take a live look outside with Sky 12 over the beautiful uh, Mission San Juan. Oh, oh my nice. goodness, it is warming up so nicely outside. Day started out really cold, but it's actually really nice. I love this right Sky now. 12 shot because that's not a shot we get to see of very Mission often. San Juan yeah. very often. Exactly. Nice. Usually you see it from ground level. Yeah, it's yeah. a very exactly. different view. It's Which nice. It's still see a beautiful view. Yeah. Absolutely. And you know, this is going to be a nice stretch of days to take the uh, path. The, the trail, you know, yeah, mission trail, mission trail way, there, yeah. and go, go for a take, hike, go a for a bike ride. Yeah. yeah, go see the missions because this is just ideal weather for it. A little bit below average temperature wise coming up in the next few days, but overall it's going to be fairly pleasant. So let's talk about our good rainfall too. This was nice. Last night we had a good soaker move through parts of South Texas. Obviously not everybody got it. But over the recharge zone, we actually got a decent amount of rain. Leon Valley picked up almost eight tenths of an inch. Medina Lake, about an inch. Pipe Creek, almost an inch and a half. Bernie, over an inch and a half. Comfort, 1.62. So some pretty healthy rainfall accumulations. Part of the recharge and drainage zone for the aquifer. At the airport, we picked up about two thirds of an inch. Sky has cleared now. We're 66 degrees, a dew point of 46. So still that crisp winter or fall like air in place because of that northwesterly breeze at nine and we're not going to feel humidity again until about Sunday Monday across the state. We have some 40s in the panhandle. Otherwise 60s and some readings in the low 70s in South Texas, Catula at 71 and Del Rio at 72. There's the clearing line. Now it's far east of I 35 moving through the coastal plain and the lack of sunshine along the coastal plain is affecting their temperatures clearly. Our 55 Corpus Christi and Victoria, 57 in LaGrange and Houston at 54. Meanwhile, in the sunshine, we're largely in the 60s and some re readings even in the 70s. So let's go through time. Tomorrow morning at sunrise, first thing in the morning, 40 degrees here in San Antonio, so a bit of a chill in the air, long sleeves, sweatshirt or light jacket, and some 30s in the hill country. Then as we get into tomorrow afternoon, Nothing but sunshine and we'll make it into the lower 60s here in town, even pushing 70 degrees down toward Laredo. But you look at the hill country and I think we'll be locked into the 50s during the day tomorrow. Now look what happens to temperatures. I mentioned we have a bit of a cool stretch, you know, 62 tomorrow, so a little below average. Average is 66 Friday right near 60. So most of the day spent in the 50s. Then we get into Saturday and we start to see that climb again and look what happens Sunday and Monday. We could be talking 80 degrees on Monday. It's not out of the question here in San Antonio. I think it's likely for some of our friends southwest of town.
So there's another look at the clearing line. All the activity, the heavy rainfall far to the east of us now. It moved through. We had a little bit of lightning and thunder with it. This is a pretty wound up system. The upper level disturbance that caused it out ahead of this dip in the flow. That's where you have the energy, that good moisture, and even some heavy snowfall across the northern tier of the U.S. associated with this system. But you look on the back side of it, nice sunshine, calm conditions. Very fair weather, and that's what's going to be moving into place here for the next couple of days. So tomorrow, wall-to-wall -wall sunshine, 40 in the morning, 55 at noon, and a high temperature in the lower 60s. So becoming fairly comfortable later on in the day. And then into Friday, even cooler in the morning. I think we'll be in the mid-30s, just barely above freezing Friday morning. And then right near 60 in the afternoon with total sunshine. Saturday, beautiful. In the 60s with sunshine, then the clouds start to roll in Sunday and Monday, but temperatures will be pushing 80 on Monday. That's before our next cold front hits on Tuesday. That'll <laughs> change things up again. All right. Thank you, Adam. Mm -hmm. All right. Spurs win one on the rodeo road trip. Yeah, and this was the, the bulk of the rodeo road trip was before the All-Star right. break. They only have two games left, so they can actually better than what they did last year when they finished one and seven. Right now, they're tied for the worst ever record in the rodeo road trip, but they did get the win last night. And after Rory McIlroy signs up, so does Ricky Fowler to return to San Antonio coming up. Our San Antonio Spurs picked up their first win on their 18th rodeo road trip with a victory over the Thunder in Oklahoma City, ending their five-game losing streak. And now, at the very least, can match last year's finish of 1-7. and seven. Trey Lyles is able to gain some room. A little pump fake on Steven Adams, and then off it goes into the lane. LaMarcus Aldridge taking advantage of Chris Paul guarding him. And just after that made basket, Lonnie Walker the fourth steals the inbounds and gets by Adams for the lay-in on the other end, starting for a second straight game in the absence of DeMar DeRozan out with back spasms. Derek White is able to find the cutting Rudy Gay for the one-handed jam, and Patty Mills delivers the off-balance jumper in the lane to take a 49-41 lead at halftime. The Thunder would cut the Spurs' lead from 14 to just one, but they don't wilt this time. DeJounte into the lane, goes high out the glass. Patty Mills follows that up with a three-pointer, and Derek White delivers, but the Spurs' lead is still only two going into the fourth quarter. But Marcus Aldridge with a nice turnaround jumper over Adams to finish at 25, then DeJounte Murray slams the door on the Thunder to finish with a career-high 25 points, and the Spurs 114-106 before the All-Star break. After the game, Pop had high praise for DeJounte. Yeah, this was probably his best game, you know, when you combine defense and offense and decision-making and that sort of thing. You know, he was great. Uh, Derek was great. Uh, you know, L.A. was a beast uh, in both ends of the floor, and I think everybody, you know, pitched in. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Miles Garrett has been reinstated to the NFL just two days after the former Aggie met with the NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell. The Cleveland Browns defensive end was suspended indefinitely after ripping the helmet off of Pittsburgh quarterback Mason Rudolph, and they used it as a weapon to hit him in the head back on November the 14th. Garrett claimed at the time that Rudolph used a racial slur, but the suspension was upheld. Garrett missed the final six games of the regular season. Garrett was the number one draft pick in 2017, had 10 sacks before his suspension. Tony Romo is a free agent in the broadcast industry, and he has and is reportedly about to make him an offer he can't refuse to try and boost Monday Night Football ratings. A former Cowboys quarterback is set to get an offer between 15 and $20 million a season. That's according to Outkick the Coverage. That's up considerably from a reported 10 to $14 million offer just a few weeks ago. It'll be interesting to see if CBS will match that. The Valero Texas Open got Rory McIlroy to commit for the first time in 2013. Now joining the number one ranked golfer in the world is Ricky Fowler, who's making his second straight appearance in San Antonio. The JW Marriott Resort and TPC course starting on April the 2nd, so the big names are coming. All right, that Tony Romo contract. Can you imagine no that? No wonder people like Drew Brees and Philip Rivers are thinking, maybe this football <laughs> thing is done. Yeah. I, I, I can retire right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. So a lot of sunshine tomorrow, but we'll start the day cool at 40 and then make it into the lower 60s by the afternoon. And wall-to-wall -wall sunshine on your Valentine's Day Friday. Cold, though, in the morning in the mid-30s, and then temperatures will warm up by the end of the weekend. And even to President's Day, we'll be flirting with 80 degrees, believe wow. it or not. Okay. But briefly, though, briefly, another cold front hits after that. <laughs> <laughs> Disclaimer. Thank yes. Thank you, Adam. And thanks so much for watching the News at 5. We'll see you back here at 6 World News Up next.